Today, I wanted to talk about the maths of the Gaussian blur. So if you've ever played around with uh, an Im image editing software, I have a uh, paint.net open right now. Um, you'll see uh, there's many types of blurs that you can do uh, to usually to like um, smoothen out the edges, also to reduce imperfections, um, also for like cool effects as well. Uh, there's different, lots of different types of blurs, but one very common one that uh, we, and especially I use, is the Gaussian blur. Today I wanted to talk about the mathematics, how the program actually calculates how to spread the color of the pixel throughout. So if we take a look at the uh, color, if we use the color picker tool, you know, we can see the uh, values of um, the pixel in the middle, right, it's just complete black. Uh, but when we apply a Gaussian, a Gaussian blur to the pixel, we'll actually get, you know, the uh, color gets um, smoothed out close to the, uh, next to the surrounding pixels. And actually it turns out that the value is completely, the value of the color is completely, is, is kept constant. Uh, so it doesn't reduce or increase, it doesn't decrease or increase the color, but all it does is, all the Gaussian blur does is it basically smooths out the color across a wider range of pixels. So we can see that the values actually, if we add them all up together, if we actually add the values um, of the, all the pixels up together, they'll actually equal uh, 100, uh, just like in the original uh, pixel without the Gaussian blur, right? They'll actually, well, they'll add up to zero. They'll add up to zero, but um, they'll add up to 100 as in uh, it'll, it, all, the value, all the values will add up to the original color. But how does it, how does it actually, you know, calculate it, right? So we know um, from statistics class, the normal distribution curve, right? So this is a one-dimensional normal distribution curve. So if you had um, like a sort of one-dimensional drawing, if that if that's uh, that might be a little bit hard to imagine, but if you had a one-dimensional drawing, you would be able to use this for a one-dimensional Gaussian blur, right? Now the cool thing about a normal curve is whether you shift the x or whether you shift the mean, uh, as long as you shift it by the same um, amount, you'll get the exact same values. Basically, it's a, it just means that the, the normal curve is symmetric. Um, and that's uh, based on the uh, equation of the Gaussian curve, or the normal distribution curve. So if we take a look at the equation for the normal distribution curve, this is the, this is the uh, probability density function uh, for a normal uh, one-dimensional normal distribution curve, the normal function. And you can see here in where with the uh, where you look at the exponents for the uh, norm, normal distribution curve, yeah, we can see that it's x minus mu, which means uh, whether you do x minus mu or negative mu plus x, uh, basically however you change it, um, it'll have a symmetric effect um, on the opposite value. So whether you keep x constant and change mu, or whether you change, so whether you keep x constant and change mu, or whether you keep mu constant and change x, you'll end up with the same uh, final result, right? As long as um, x is equal to negative mu, right? But that's the equation for the one-dimensional curve, one-dimensional normal distribution. We want to find the equation for the two-dimensional normal distribution curve. So first we just want to center um, the mean at uh, zero. Uh, this should be uh, mu. This should be mu. Uh, we, we want to center the mean at zero. We actually, all we really need to do uh, to change it to do two dimensions is actually just multiply the weights of an x normal distribution curve by a y normal distribution curve. So we're just combining two normal distribution curves together. 
Well, you'll end up with is something like this, right? You'll you can see the normal distribution curve on the x axis and on the y axis, uh, but you're just multiplying the weights, right? Because they're completely independent of each other, and that way, at the end, you actually get. Uh, if we go through a, a bit of the proof, right, a, a bit of the math, what you actually end up at the end is um, this function right here. This is the probability density function for a two-dimensional Gaussian function. Um, and that's uh, for a regular Gaussian function. And if we generalize it to n dimensions, we'll actually end up with this uh, equation at the bottom. I'll post a link to all the uh, you know, the papers and um, all the code and everything if, if you want to take a look at it. Uh, but here, I just made a quick sort of uh, Python code just to show you what the actual array would look like. Uh, so instead of looking at it in terms of color, if we look at it in terms of the array, if we had some arrays arranged with uh, only ones in the middle, what? so let's say one is... Uh, completely black, right? Uh, it's a, uh, a value with a 100, right? And 0 is a pixel that's completely white, right? So it's uh, a value is 0. Then, uh, if we go through this whole code, um, it, I'll also post a link to the code too. Um, you can see, you can calculate the value for the cell in the center, the very center. Uh, it'll be 0.9991, no, basically. Uh, and that makes sense. Um, if we, I'm using a Gaussian blur of 1, a radius of 1 right now, and since it's a radius of 1, it makes sense that the value would still be 1, right? Because it's, uh, you're blurring it across the whole 3x3 uh, three three pix, 3x3 uh, three three section in the center, but that's all 1, so you're not uh, blurring anything. And if we actually, um, kind of put it into 3D, if we take a look at it as though if it was like a 3D, if we take a look at it, um, if I actually mapped the values to a 3D uh, cube, it would look like this. That's what the Gaussian blur would look like if color was represented as a third dimension. So that's what, that's what the Gaussian blur would look like. And yeah, um, 